Hi and welcome to another video. I'm going to start this video off with a bit of an apology. I know it's been nearly two weeks since I put the last video up. I'm sorry, you know, we've all got problems, it's not an excuse. But yeah, sometimes things just get here, so... Well, we're here now anyway, so we're going to cover a few things. First of all, I want to talk about some experiments I've been doing with the bend layer material. You remember a few videos ago that I looked at the bend layer material. So, as we all know, I cycle to work and I've got a SJ4000 action cam. Now, I strapped this thing to my cycling helmet to, to, to kind of like be safe on the roads and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying I'm out to catch anybody or anything, but you know how it is these days. So, I looked on Thingiverse and I found this. There you go. It's the bog standard. I'm going to call it a shoe. I have no idea what to call it. But it's the bog standard um, GoPro style shoe. Let's see if I can show you that angle there. There you go. And I just printed it up out of bright orange ABS. Now this particular one, I'll put the link in the description if you want to find it. Has um, It had some slots in it. But uh, I drilled them out to holes so that I could put some cable ties through. And, and that's it. it. It fits on your helmet. It's really rigid. It's nice and solid. And, and that's pretty cool. And the main part of that is this, which you can see. I'll turn it around so you can see probably better. There you go. I've made it out with a bend layer material. And it, these arms are really bendy. It's really cool. Now, I did try and make one of these things out of ABS. It was the orange ABS, actually. Yeah, th this arm's kind of custom made as well. That was just to uh, alleviate three carbuncled mounts on there. You know, it looks a bit better like that, but yeah, who cares? Anyway, yeah, I made one of these out of ABS to see if it would actually be any good. And the answer was, when you squeeze it, like, kind of in here, in there, that bit there, the, the plastic goes white and then kind of, like, brittleizes and then just breaks off. But this bend layer stuff, I mean, this has been kind of squeezed in about... about thousand times 1500 times or so and it's absolutely fine and if you look at the fit I can't even pick it up if you look at the fit that was good all right let's see if i can there uh, right can you see this and with a bit of luck you'll be able to see this there you go and as you can see fits in quite nicely now the only problem i have discovered with this is there's a bit of play in it so i may have to kind of take these thingiverse files and rework them whether I want to put a shim in the bottom or make it thicker or something. I haven't quite decided yet. But I will whoops, I will publish the the, uh, the finished files to Thingiverse as a remix of the original files um, when I discover and remember where they were from. But like I said at the minute, it's all a work in progress. I want to get a good few hundred mile on the bike first before I kind of go publishing this thing and saying, yeah, use this to fix your camera to your helmet just in case it smashes after 50 mile or something. But uh, that, that's what I've been up to, which is, uh, it's, it's okay. It, that's not bad. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad. Um, next, I want to talk about, um, yes, the YouTube comments. I had a comment from uh, a YouTube user called 3D Workshop. Now, this guy has obviously, you know, he's got the same mindset as me. He wants to push the technology hard. And the comment said that he had successfully printed the abs carbon fiber fill material with a stock da vinci 1.0 stock hot end and everything and i think that's fantastic you know that that's brilliant that other people out there are willing to kind of like push the boundaries and see what this thing can do and the fact that you can put carbon fiber through that thing well it's not really carbon fiber but you know what i mean it's the carbon fill stuff i think it's great i think it's absolutely great so Thanks for them comments, you know, and thanks for letting us know that you're out there and you're experimenting with this stuff. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thought I was the only kind of experimenter, but obviously I'm not. <laughs> there's, there's obviously hundreds of us. And um, that brings me swiftly on to another YouTube user. Uh, I was contacted a couple of weeks ago by YouTube user. I apologize if I get this wrong, but it's Sauntson or s Sauntson or something like that. Uh, Sorry, Stuart. The, the guy's called Stuart. He's from Cambridge, England. And um, he contacted me and he let me know that he had successfully followed all seven phases of the E3D V6 upgrade to the DaVinci 1.0. But he'd gone one step further and he'd actually reconfigured Repetia Host 
to use the original 5 volt coolant fan for the hot end as a filament coolant fan and he printed out a part from Thingiverse which allows you to direct air right at the end of the hot end so you can print PLA and stuff with this and one of the best things is he's managed to print NinjaFlex with it so where I failed with the stock extruder he's absolutely just surpassed it um, I'll put some pictures in so you can see what his printer looks like um, he's fashioned a, a bracket to hold the filament detection board on which you know that that's much better than my yeah just tie wrap it to the top idea yeah make a bracket and screw it in place that's a brilliant idea um, and that allows you to use the 5 volt port with Repetio Host to power that fan as a filament coolant fan that's fantastic that's brilliant so i've got some footage that uh, stuart sent us so without further ado over to stuart I've never tried printing with NinjaFlex before. This is actually the second attempt. The first one I was going to do without any new glue on the bed, but uh, that didn't stick. So I've now moved it to some Yuhu glue on the bed itself. And it seems at present to be printing. But we will continue it on and we'll see where we get to. Now, as I've said, this is the E3D 1.75 direct drive V6 hot end on A Da Vinci 1.0 with Repetier 0.92 with the repurpose function for the filament fan. As you'll be aware, the E3D itself comes with a hot end fan built onto the shroud. but I've never tried printing NinjaFlex. This is the first time, in fact, the only thing I've printed on this printer so far is in fact ABS. So the settings I'm using are the hot end is 220 degrees, the heated bed is 50 degrees, the print speed is around 30 millimeters per second and as I've said before this is NinjaFlex 1.75. See, it's just beginning to do the last few layers. I believe it's got three layers to do and it's just done the first of those. Now they will give the outer shell. Here comes layer number two. And finally,
for a first go I don't think that is too bad as you can see it's holding together quite nicely it's not solid it was only on 50% fill but as you can see it is able to print it clearly some of the settings will have to be tweaked very slightly but as for that the E3D conversion on a DaVinci 1.0 is working. So how amazing was that? We've just seen Stuart successfully print NinjaFlex with a DaVinci 1.0 with an E3D V6 and a filament coolant fan. I think that's brilliant. I mean, as as Stuart said in his video there, there's obviously some tweaking to do to the settings, but that's, that's kind of what 3d printing is all about you know if you didn't have to tweak the settings and you just press print it, it wouldn't be half as fun as it is but the fact that his print didn't melt like mine did and it actually came out looking absolutely brilliant i think that's excellent absolutely excellent so thanks again Stuart, for sending us all that footage and all those photographs and keep pushing the boundaries and see where we can get to so i'm going to close this video off there i think it's absolutely brilliant the channel's really coming together it's picking up speed people are pushing boundaries i think it's absolutely fantastic so as usual please like comment and subscribe i've been steve thanks for listening